up everybody happy tuesday welcome to the hill presented by the national rock racing association man we are just getting back from an epic event at mid-america uh that is the topic of this episode so uh strap in man uh, it, it's gonna be a good one <clears throat> my guest today is um was a rookie last year and uh he he started racing a buggy that was not necessarily designed for uh rock bouncer racing so he went back to the drawing board and built a whole new buggy and this year he really dove in head first uh, with the goal of standing on podiums. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna hear from him. I, I want to, I'm, I'm gonna take a second. I want everybody to take a second and uh, share this with me. I'm going to do my best to help these guys uh, all of the every time. These guys can get in front of media, can get in front of new crowds. It helps grow their social media, which in turn helps grow their race program, uh, which helps them continue to uh, be at these races, at these events. You know, it it uh, it really does. I have found that it really does take a village. It it really has been. You know, the companies sponsoring the drivers and the fans buying from the companies and the race series, uh, it just, it all comes together. Um, and it's been, it's been an amazing journey. That's for sure. I, I tell you what, guys, I am wore out. <laughs> I am wore out. Uh, we had, what, three races in a row uh, in April here, and we're fixing to go into Dirty Turtle here coming up. But uh, it has been a journey, but a good one, 
uh, don't get me wrong, I am uh, one thousand percent in this and ready to continue on. Adam Coots uh, checking in. Miss Kathy Krogh, Billy McGrath, howdy sir, how are you? Sam Ball here. Jim Pulley, what's up, Nick? How are you, Jim? Nicole joining us. Well, listen, uh, Sam Ball, it's all a big family helping each other. I agree. I agree 100%. Mark Giles, what's up, man? Andrew Arnett, how are you, sir? Well, listen, I want to make sure and take a second and thank my sponsors. That's uh, keeping this boat afloat. Uh, first of all, our presenting sponsor, the National Rock Racing Association. I uh, want to give Clyde and his family a huge shout out. Uh, Clyde was the one that gave me a shot. He believed in me. Uh, he saw the fire, the passion that I had for rock bouncing, and he gave me a shot. Uh, so huge shout out to Clyde Bynum. I want to give uh, another thanks to um, some folks that really have no reason to uh, invest in someone like myself in this show, and that's race teams. Race teams have a, a ton of financial responsibility with uh, keeping their buggies together, uh, but yet they still have stepped out and supported me and supported this show through sponsorship. So I want to give a huge shout out to Cash LaCroix Racing, Behind Bars Racing, uh, and All Good Racing. Huge shout out to those guys, man. Please get over to their pages. You'll see their their logos scrolling up here. Um, please get, get to their pages, follow them, like their stuff, buy their t-shirts and stuff, help them out. Um, we've also had some companies get involved, some big companies. Uh, Raceline has been instrumental this year they have been so helpful uh with me last year as well and i want to give a huge shout out to um bryant at rock life off road uh, uh brian dunnigan huge shout out to him thank you sir for all you do for us uh and um uh danos cages danos cages uh if, if you need a stout race chassis or just a protective chassis over what you've already got you know your side by side hit them up man hit them up good company very good company uh also mid-america outdoors we're going to talk about them a little bit today huge shout out to jason and all his uh his team uh but then i also want to say thanks to media sponsors and uh um d pats photography was at mid america this past weekend and uh, we had a great time catching up with him. And if you get over to D Pat's Photography's uh, Facebook pages, check out some of the um, some of the photos that he's dropped. Man, uh, it, they're straight art, dude. They're just D Pat has the eye. Uh, he's got he's got the equipment. It's just it's just he does amazing work. So huge shout out to D Pat's uh, Black Dog Photography, another guy that uh, that has helped some of us get a start in the sport as well as high octane films charles at high octane films man thank you guys so much uh and last but definitely not least lucas tolfson chris tolfson uh everybody at eagle eye productions jamie huge shout out to all you guys man thank you so much uh, you have added a layer to media for this rock bouncing stuff that will change the game. Uh, it is bringing huge numbers to the live feeds for the races. So um, coverage is just getting better and better and better. And this is and that's how that's exciting, y'all. We should be excited for that. That's how the sport grows. Okay, stuff like that. But listen, it also grows. Uh, uh, hang on one second. Andrew Ar Arnett says, Blue, my main engine today in the boat might not make it out to Dirty Turtle if we can't get her done uh, up by then. Rebuild time. Okay, brother. Well, listen, you be safe, all right? Uh, but Dirty Turtle's going to be there. Dirty Turtle is going to be there. Um, uh, yeah, don't. That is no. That is nothing to shake a stick at, man. Don't. Uh, We'll, we'll be, there'll be another. Trust me, we'll get you there, all right? Be safe out there, Andrew. Andrew Arnett, fishing off the coast of Rhode Island. Um, we'll make sure that uh, you guys get back to shore safely and 
and uh, everything's good. Speaking of uh, Mid America Outdoors, Jared Davidson checking in. What's up, Jared? Uh, if you were at Mid America last week and went into that pro shop, that is Jared Davidson. Jared Davidson is in charge of all that. Uh, well done, sir. The place is amazing. You know what? Uh, let me show you who else is amazing. Let's bring him on here right now. Charlie Brown Jr. in the house. Man, I, I hate to throw you right in the fire like this. How you doing, brother? Good, how are you? Can you? I, I, I'm, I knew I was going to try to lead in with some sort of intro, but uh, I, I am so fired up about Mid America, the pro shop, and everything uh, that they have to offer now. Uh, I wanted to bring you on so you and I could talk about it together. Um, that pro shop, dude, the food was amazing. Coffee shop, all the clothing. I'm wearing one of the hats right now. Like the design and and, and of all the clothing, not just the hats, but but everything, man. Like, what'd you think? Yeah, they did a they did an awesome job. Uh, it's hard to believe that place could got better, but it, they definitely upped it. I mean, that was that was cool. It was nice to be able to get there and get breakfast. Uh, they even got several coffees there. Uh, I mean, it's that places they got to figure it out for sure. Yes, they do. Kathy Krogh say, uh, saying, uh, Charlie Brown Jr., hi. She's saying hi. Hello, Kathy. Uh, everybody watching, I just want to make sure that you guys can hear Charlie. I've got him cranked all the way up uh, as best I can. Um, and I'll make sure that my yeah my headset's up too. So I just want to make sure that everybody can hear him all right. Mr. Ryan Boyd watching. I, I saw you, Ryan, this weekend, man. Uh, I hope everything's good. Congratulations on everything going on in your life. Uh, we hope to see you back on the hill soon. Yeah, Boyd needs to get that buggy out soon. I know, I know. We'd love to see. He's got a lot going on in his life, as we all do. But he's you know he's got a lot of big big things coming in his life. So. Uh, we, we get it. Okay, Jim Pulley says he can hear you fine. All right, so, um, yeah, Pro Shop is amazing. Uh, if you drive a little bit past the Pro Shop, you can see all of the amazing campsites. They've got two bathhouses now. Um, uh, you know, and then you come to the vendor area, which is where the bar in the original pool is. Now, again, we're talking about an off-road park it's not a park guys it really is a resort it's a destination but there was a pool there but now there is a bigger pool a much bigger pool yeah, gotta be nice this summer. yes sir uh i agree the the pool is amazing it's huge but then there is a lazy river just beyond that that you can float around and if you get to a certain spot on the lazy river you can actually watch the short course racing yeah the short course track is pretty legit too we uh we actually stayed sunday and i don't think we left before right 4 35 o'clock we raced we rode racers all day and ate lunch and just kind of hung out that's awesome enjoyed it everybody was gone that's amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome because uh, that is absolutely the park that you want to do that. The park that you want to get there Friday and stay right until you absolutely can't stay anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's only about three and a half hours for me. So Perfect. That's, that's the closest park to me really to race it. Yeah, so that's your home park. I'm envious. I'm envious. Yeah. All right, so uh, you had a very interesting weekend. Um, you you didn't go to Rush, so the buggy was fresh from Bikini Bottoms. Did you have any problems at Bikini Bottoms? Uh, yeah, I had a bunch of problems at Bikini Bottoms. Uh, I had the, the regulator went bad, the fuel regulator went out. Brakes. I lost uh, a brake line. It bent the uh, balance bar. It's got a, it had a dual master cylinder in it, but it bent the balance bar. Uh, and then also a rocket, the rear brake line. So I, I DNF the first hill and wasn't able to run the second. Uh, and then got all that fixed uh, before Mid America. 
put a new regulator on our new fuel pump. I've been fighting fueling issues a little bit. Pretty much every race. Not not all fueling, but just new buggy blues. But I've had multiple problems with the fuel system on it, so I put a whole thing on it uh, before this last week. Okay. And uh, let's see. Um, so you get you got all that fixed. You had you had almost two weeks to get all that fixed. Um, on Friday, you raced in a class in a kind of a different class. There, you want to tell us tell us about that? get there Friday and just kind of hang out and see the hills and it's been killing me. I've, I've just been wanting to try the stock UTV class. Um, I've been actually trying to talk Dana into running it. Um, she doesn't think she's quite ready yet. Uh, I kind of agree. Um, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want her to tear her buggy up or uh, hurt herself, you know, so she's been practicing a little bit, so hopefully she'll, uh, hopefully she'll step up and run that, but I'm torn. I, I did it. I just wanted to try it, but, you know, I bought that razor to get around the pits and so we could trail ride on the weekends and stuff. We're not racing, so I don't, like, I know if I start racing it, it I'm going to tear it up or make a racer buggy out of it or something, so I'm, I'm kind of torn. I don't know if I'll keep doing it or not. It was fun. I mean, it's totally different. I mean, it kind of knocks the edge off Friday for the big buggy race Saturday. It's one thing I didn't like about it. Okay, uh, and who are you running for? You were running for somebody, weren't you? Yeah, I was originally, I was just going to be a late entry, and then Clint Garrison asked me, uh, or told me I could run for him. He didn't, I, I don't know if his uh, Yamaha broke, or it wasn't his or something, I don't know the whole story, but uh, he uh, he said I could run for him. I think I'm going to run for him at Dirty Turtle, too. Okay, yeah, he's been running that. So <clears throat> He's been running that yeah. manual shift Yamaha. Man, I think it's uh, it's quite interesting. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Uh, Shelby Reed says, number one Dana fan, go whoop Charlie, homegirl. Yeah, she needs one too. <laughs> um, so you, you you had a chance to kind of see the course that we were racing on Saturday in the big buggy. Now, you had the opportunity after everything on Friday to bring the big buggy out. You want to tell us what you guys were working on or were you just pre-running or what was going on? Yeah, uh, Friday after the Razor races, uh, I wanted to hit those uh, uh, Yamaha mongrels, wherever you want to call them. Uh, I've never, I haven't had my buggy on anything like that yet. Um, so I just kind of wanted to get a feel of what what that what it was going to do. Uh, I didn't hit any of the hills. I basically just ran the course a couple times just to kind of feel it out. Uh, just kind of know what to expect. And I'm glad I did. You had... Um... Yeah, I didn't. I personally, I didn't think... Uh, I just I wanted to know what my buggy was going to do, but I didn't think you could win the race in the, you know, going through those whoops as fast as you could, but uh, I knew you could lose it there if something went bad, so I just kind of went through them and finished everything else. Okay. Larry Krogh asking what day it is. It's Friday. Every day is Friday. <laughs> uh, all right, so... Going into the big buggy race, do you, what number did you draw? Where were you at in the pack? Uh, I think I was 12. Uh, yeah, I was like middle in the pack on the first hill and like six off the line on the second hill. Okay, so you're, you're, what did you think about the course? Had it changed much? I liked it. But, but had it changed much, though, once, you know, after a day of racing, the Razor's on it, and then, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't see a big change, really. Uh, you know, the, the whoops kind of got packed in a little bit, and they were pretty big. I mean, those things were, those things were pretty gnarly. Uh, 
the Razors definitely been through the middle a lot better than the big buggies. Uh, but the rain, I think, more than anything, I mean, it, it rained, you know, all, all Friday night and then Saturday morning there. That was probably the biggest, the biggest uh, change more than anything. Uh, we had plenty of that this year. Yeah, no doubt. Um, did you have any issues going through all that water and stuff? Um, a little bit, just kind of typical uh, mud on the visor and all that. I I, I got a helmet blower on my on my buggy, and I need to get the the hose the hose for it. So I fog up, especially on the starting line, you know, breathing, sitting there in your helmet clothes. Yeah. So I kind of keep it tracked, but. Uh, no, my buggy, uh, I, I mean, I had, I had several little problems. I don't know if it was a water or what, but it really wasn't running the best. And then uh, the biggest thing the mud hurt me on was uh, it, it messed up my rear side. Uh, the, the mud was, like, caked on those plugs, and I don't know if it was pulling out a wire or what, but my first run there, uh, the rear stair didn't want to self-center. And luckily, after the first round, we figured out what it was, cleaned all the mud off, cleaned the plugs, and got it working. So, so you never did find out what it was? No, it was it was that it was a plug. I got a, I run a Stasworth self center, and it's got four oh. four sensors on the back, and it was caked in mud back there. Okay, all right, my bad. I mean, they're all weatherproof or weather uh, weather pack connectors, but I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it was just so much or if kind of pulled them out or what. I'm actually going to, this weekend, I'm going to go through all that really good. Okay. Yeah. We have had some muddy, <laughs> some muddy events this year so far. Uh, um, you know, Wildcat, even Bikini Bottoms was not raining, but still was muddy in mid-America. That's the first time I've been there and it's raining. So, yeah. It was, uh, that mud was sticky. It was probably slippery too, huh? Y'all, y'all had that really sharp turn that you had to go around. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, like, I don't know, I kind of like those, I like, I don't mind the course being like that. To me, it kind of levels the playing field a lot more. Uh-huh. Uh, the hills that anybody can climb and when it's perfect conditions, you know, it's even harder to beat those guys that, are, you know, that have been doing it for so long. So yeah. it just kind of just throws another, another, you know, twist to it. Did you uh, use rear steer at all going around that corner or just... Yeah, I, I, I rear steer around the corner and then it, it didn't self-center. So normally as soon as I let go of the button, it will go back to center and it, did, it didn't center. And that really threw me off because I was I was worried. I didn't want to. I didn't know if it was going to stay centered. Uh, I, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that the, you know at the time when I'm racing, I just knew it didn't self center. So I didn't know if it was a wiring issue, if something come loose, broke. You know, I didn't I didn't know for sure what was going on. So you know, with the rest of the course, I didn't want to just hammer down out of control and you know catch a tree or whatever. You know, I didn't know which way the I could feel it, you know, if they did straighten back up, but I was kind of afraid to use them the rest of the course. Right. Yeah, no no doubt we're uh, we're watching slow mo you going around a corner right now and uh, you can see it's not necessarily raining, but it is slick, it is muddy. Charles Chris, yes, Nick, mud tends to be sticky and slippery. Yeah, thanks for that, Charles. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Where are you headed right now? Me? Yeah. I'm headed home. We, uh, we got a bunch of rain coming in uh, tonight, tomorrow. Uh, we were working on a couple of big barn pads today to get them in before the weather comes. And, Actually, I was at Lake Ozark, so I'm driving back to Lake City to finish a turbo kit on a car for a uh, guy tomorrow while training. I think that's important to note, you know, the uh, the the daily grind. You know, you, you're not home right now to do this interview because you had to go fix a piece of equipment, yeah. right? 
machine go down on us this morning and that kind of slowed us down. I, I really was planning on being home in the shop when we did this tonight and it just, it didn't work out. We just trying to get that, yeah. that uh, path built for the weather again. Yeah. So, Man, it, you know, that's why I, that's why I always tell everybody that's watching, you know, the best thing you can do for these drivers is to to help support them, get to their pages, share their stuff, buy their stuff, you know. Tyler Price, those crazy reject buggies are legit. Crowd went crazy when you and Danny jumped that bluff. Yeah, let's talk about that. We haven't talked about Hill 2 yet. So, hill, or hill 1's when I jumped the bluff. Uh, oh, my bad. Was it Hill 1? When I walked the course, yeah. I... Yeah, it's Hill 1. Uh, when I walked the course, I was going to go right by the tree, just like everybody else uh, did. But I ran, the, you know, towards the back of the pack. And uh, when I looked at it, uh, you know, I, I looked at the left side, but I, uh, I didn't really, like, study it. You know, I it wasn't my game plan, but... Uh, Buggy's got up there and dug it out, and uh, I I seen Bubba back and flip off of it, and that was kind of what I told him, you know, and he's he's good at that stuff. And uh, when he when he flipped off of it, and then when Timmy had couldn't one shot it, I knew it was bad. Uh, and luckily, so I was sitting at the starting line, they were flipping. Jay over. Jay went right before me. They were getting him back on his wheels, and Danny Smith was over there by the hill, and he actually come walking over to me, and uh, I asked him, I asked him what he thought, and he goes, "Man, he goes, uh, the right side's." The right side's pretty bad. He goes. I think the left side is jumpable. And uh, that's all I needed to hear. I uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to struggle on the right. I figured I could flip off the left just as easy, or the right just as easy as the as the left. So. Yeah, I took my chances and it worked. Sorry about this connection, y'all. You still there, Charlie? Yeah, I did. But when I tried to take off and hit the ledge, and the buggy was crab walking, so I had to back up, get it straight. Are you there? Yeah, I think we got you back. We're uh, we're watching your Hill One run right now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we got you back. I think we got I think we got the gist of that that story, uh, Danny Smith, and all the drivers for that matter, will will help like that. You know, I, I, that's not the first time I've heard stories like that. You know. Yeah, it was kind of reassuring though, because like I said, I seen bubble flip off of it, Tammy struggle. Like I, that was like that was my next thought. It was okay, just. Tried jumping it. They jumped it last year at the Outlaw Finals. And yes. Then, like I said, he come over. And, you know, he come over and read my mind. I mean, I, I needed to hear that. He, that was. I asked him what he thought. He's like, right side's bad. I think he, I think the left side's jumpable. So. Okay, so so going into Hill Two, you had to be pretty confident. You know that we were watching video of your. Uh, Hill one run and man, it just shows how steep that really is. Yeah, hill two, I went like six off the line, so I had a pretty good draw on that. That hill didn't change a lot during the race. Uh, uh, everybody was pretty well committed to hitting it, but not everybody landed the same. It seemed like. Trying to find that run for you. Um, 
the downhill, th this was unique uh, about this course, is you guys did have legit hills to climb, but uh, the downhills were a factor as well. You guys had kind of a choice of three different trails to take down. Um, how, how was that? How did that go for you? I know, I know. I, I just, you know, there's a lot of factors in this racing stuff. You know, tires, suspension, you know, pick, pick, pick one. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, just wanted to show these guys your hill to run. And, and I understand what you mean about not being happy. You're, you're a perfectionist and... and I talked about it earlier before we came on, you know, you dove into this head first. You are, you are in it to win it. The name of this buggy is Hang Time because you're trying to hang with the big boys and you stood on the podium. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you say, you say I needed this, you know, because th that's your drive. You, you've done it. You've stood on the podium. You've been in the top three. You know, yeah. from here on out, it's just a learning learning curve, learning experience. Yeah, I learned more this weekend than probably in a, any other race. So yep. I learned a lot. And you stood on the podium. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, uh, I, keep, I keep track of everything that goes wrong and goes right at the races on my phone. And uh, I had a good list of both. Uh, and it was good. But I did need it, man. I've been, I've been grinding. I've been really trying. And... I keep telling myself, you know, this is this is basically my first full year. I mean, I think I did five or six races last year. Yep. And this is the sixth race in my new buggy this year, you know. And it's uh, it's hard to tell yourself, you know, that it, it takes time. And it does. I mean, all these guys were racing, you know, have been doing it for years and years and years. So, I mean, there's going to be a long, a lot of the long, Ride home Sunday, you know, with no trophy, but it was it was dang nice uh, Sunday driving home. My boy, little Charlie was he wouldn't let go of that thing. That man. is awesome, man. He wouldn't let go. But Sunday Sunday morning we woke up and I'm not kidding you. He, he didn't even knock the sleep out of his eyes. And the first thing he asked was, uh, we had the trophy. We got dinner Saturday night and had the trophy out outside and. Uh, he wakes up, he's like, Mom, did it rain last night? And she's like, no. And he's like, good, I didn't want the trophy to get dirty. And she's like, well, I brought it inside. And he, he jumped down, and, he, I mean, he hasn't let go of that thing. That's awesome, so man. I, good for him. That makes, that makes me feel really good. Yeah, heck yeah, man. Good for him. He gets to... <clears throat> what a positive experience for our children to be at, you know, uh, with all the all the people, the, the good, solid people that were were around every weekend at the races. Uh, you know, the fact that we play the national anthem and we say our prayers, and, uh, we help each other out. Uh, what an, and, you know, and then on top of that, the cherry on top is seeing dad at the top of that in that group you know in, in that whole situation dad's standing on the podium and people are ch clapping and cheering for him and and uh he's he's going on tv to be interviewed for it you know what i mean that's amazing yeah. that's amazing for yeah. our kids so i'm happy to hear that dude i'm happy to hear that he, he's a good dad he's a good dad and uh 
he asked me every week if we're going to, you know, if we're going to win, if we're going to get a trophy. And I always tell him, well, we're going to try. We're going to try. And, yeah, he, uh, he was happy. He was, he was really happy. That's good. That's good. Andrew, yeah, I'm sorry about that, buddy. We, we got the sound. I got the sound fixed now. Well, listen, man, um, I know that you can't be doing this alone. Well, maybe you can. I, I, I say that all the time. But, but no, here's the thing. I've, I've said it before. I know that you know you can't do this alone. And some people do have sponsors. They have legit sponsors. But the bottom line is, is if you've got family or friends that are helping you out, then you need to be thanking those guys as well. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, but this I... This weekend, uh, my dad came down. Nice. And, uh, some of uh, my buddies from Kansas City who I, I helped me help me in the draft for a while. Okay. Uh, Kyle and Eric and Robbie and uh, I had a bunch of people down there that, uh, back where I live, I come down and see it, hang out and all that. And, uh, it was cool. I was, I was glad everybody was there. That's awesome. And and what about uh, sponsors for the buggy and stuff? Yeah, Travis Rhodes uh, really helped me out. Rhodes did. Uh, he's, like, he, 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 uh, he, he, he did a lot for me. I'm very, very grateful for him. Uh, Chris did his big block race shop. He uh, has been helping me with the shocks and helped me get them and um, everything for the new buggy. I talked to him quite a bit. Uh, MS3 Pro, fuel injector development, Tim at Acres Transmission helped me. Uh, Justin Holt, uh, uh, Ryan at True Motorsports, he helped me with the uh, new booster. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Dana, for letting Charlie do this stuff so we can enjoy watching him race. We all do, man. Uh, I know that there is a lot of Charlie Brown fans now um, as you have worked harder and harder and harder, and we appreciate that. The buggy looks amazing, sounds amazing. Um, you, you and I had a conversation the other day. Dang, dude. He was late Wait, for supper. That, yeah, I heard that. I heard that. He was late for supper, whoever that was. Yeah, it was some guy on the motorcycle. <laughs> well, hey, listen, we, we had like a, a pretty unique conversation the other day. And, and uh, you know, don't don't talk about anything you don't want to talk about. But, uh, you know, how how are you feeling? We're about halfway through the season. You know, um, any, any changes, anything that uh, is going on that you'd like to talk about? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start building another buggy. Uh, I, I was going to change some stuff on this buggy, uh, but I just don't think I want to cut it up. Uh, I'm happy with it. If I was smart, I'd keep it and race it next year. But there's just... I mean, I, building's half the fun for me. Um, but there's just some little things that I want to change. And um, I don't think I'm going to do it to this one. I was I was tempted. Uh, I was actually going to swap motors and um, do some chassis changes. Uh, but I think I'm just going to keep, keep grinding with what I got and then start fresh with the new one. That's good, man. Uh, yeah, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a, that's perfect. That's perfect. Get some seat time in, you know. Yeah, I, I wish I could swing keeping it, uh, and I might. We'll see. We'll see how the how the year goes with work and everything else. As much as we've been racing, I ain't been doing much working. But uh, I don't know. I would like to keep it honestly, uh, and then try to swing build another one. But I don't. I don't know. We'll see. Yep. Well, um, if these guys are watching and they want to support you, uh, where can they find you on social media? How can they follow you and stuff? Um, I got a Sparks Fly. It's got uh, SPRX on it. Uh, it's got a Sparks Fly logo on it. Uh, I got the Sparks Fly logo on it. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, it's Okay, so guys, get on over to uh, Charlie's social media. What platforms are you on? Facebook. I know you're on Instagram, right? Just uh, 
post Facebook and Instagram. Okay. I got a TikTok, but I get better than anybody else. <laughs> uh, so get on over, support these guys, man, and uh, get on out to these races. Speaking of that, uh, Dirty Turtle coming up. You raced at Dirty Turtle last year. Uh, I, I can't guarantee that we're going to be racing the same hills again. But yeah. what do you think? Uh, any changes to the buggy? Any going in any different? Um, I'm going to get the brakes fixed. Um, I'm going to get the brakes fixed. I still haven't sat down and gone through the laptop. I want to go through the catalogs of uh, two runs down there at uh, Mid America and just make sure everything, see what, see what was going on with the motor. Uh, other than that, no, we're just going to prep it. Uh, actually, I'm going to pull everything apart this weekend and really go through it. Uh, but no, Dirty Turtle was my first Southern Rock race last year. Okay. So I, I, like, I like that course. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to going back. Um, let's see. Uh, where was I going to... Where was I going to go with that? I had a... I had a uh, question for you. Yes, Lindsay, Dana, thank you guys. Sparks Sparks Fly Racing and Fabrication. Dan Carter checking in saying, well-deserved podium. Stoked to see you on the boxes. Uh, when he talks about the boxes, we, we have three aluminum boxes that these guys stand on. Uh, they are obviously different height for first, second, and third. Uh, and it is a big deal to stand on the boxes. Charlie Brown, man, we are all so proud of you, and, and uh, I'm very thankful to have you on the show. Thank you for taking the time. I, I know you're a busy guy, and, and uh, you know we just want to just want to keep seeing you guys succeed. Keep seeing you come back for more and better and better, and we appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, you know everybody watching, like you know. I'm I'm probably the happiest third place finisher ever, but I'm telling you what, that is uh, that's a tough that's a tough tough deal. I mean, you're running against the best guys at driving bouncers in the country, and they've been doing it a long time. Uh, I, I, I'm very happy that I got up there as soon as I did. I just hopefully we keep the momentum rolling. I do feel like there's a weight off my shoulders. I know I ain't won yet, but uh, I got up there. I proved to myself that I, I can. You know, I knew I could. Uh, I knew it was a matter of time. But, uh, yeah, it's, I needed that. I feel like uh, I can go and, and just kind of drive now, not worry about everything else. Just drive and take it as it comes. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, Timmy Cameron, uh, our, what, five or six years straight champ, wasn't even in the top five. So, yeah. you know, for, for those drivers that are coming up that, that might have a little frustration, you know, um, even the best have off days. And yeah. and the if you think about how long some of these guys have been racing, you know, you can have an off day. Timmy Cameron, I'm sure, had a lot of off days in the very beginning. You know, yeah. Timmy Cameron was not the first person to win the, win the championship. You know, yeah. he, uh, in fact, he he didn't even win the second year. Okay, but but uh, he kept learning and kept coming back and having better and better races and learning, like Charlie said. So definitely, just keep on the grind, man. Just keep at it. Keep learning. And uh, talk to these guys, you know, you know, Charlie Brown's a sophomore. You're a sophomore this year, but uh, but you have some experience. And there's new drivers that are starting to come in. I mean, Wisconsin's coming on strong. North Carolina's coming on strong. They've got some pretty decent bouncers with some pretty committed guys behind the wheel. You know, come and ask these guys, man. It is just a big family, and everybody takes care of everybody. I heard you fed everyone with the fajitas. Yeah, we cooked the fajitas uh, Friday night. Yeah, I was uh, I was probably driving to to uh, Tulsa to get somebody from the airport, so I didn't get to partake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm ready to go back to America. Ah. No doubt. Lindsey James says the Pound Town crew is super proud of you. Right, yep. <laughs> Eric and Lindsey, all those guys were there. I, we had a full crew. 
That's awesome. Yep, good. Perfect. The more the merrier, man. Definitely. Well, listen, I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. If you need anything, let me know. And I look forward to seeing you in, in Kentucky. Yep, we'll see you next weekend. Yes, sir. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you soon. Yep, thanks, sir. All right, see you. Charlie Brown Jr., y'all. Great for the sport. Charlie Brown is great for the sport. We uh, we need Charlie Browns because he is just head over heels for the sport in a good way, in a non relationship way. Dana, don't don't. She knows what I mean. Yeah, Mid America. Um, before we sign off, I, I do want to say the next time uh well then uh the next time the national rock racing association is going to be at mid-america will be for visions visions 2021 so uh if you are into off-roading at all and i mean in any capacity visions 2021 is going to be the place that you want to go to this year it's the first time that it's ever happened this is the inaugural year or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what's the word you know it's the first it's the first time vi- this event has ever happened it's going to incorporate ultra four racing rock bouncing uh, they are going to have monster trucks stunt bike riders dirt bike riders you know um, there's going to be short course racing UTV style short course racing they're going to have bull riding mega trucks uh pit bike racing i mean there's just guys <laughs> uh in in some of the musical acts puddle of mud uh buck cherry some midgets that dress up like kiss yeah yeah it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be a good time so uh visions 2021 if you go over to midamericaoutdoors.com, you can uh, find all of the information that you need on Visions. Uh, please buy your tickets now because I dare say that once uh, they they do have a limit, okay? They do have a certain amount of tickets. Once they sell, they're, they're out. Uh, and you want to make sure that you can get into this event. <laughs> Trust me. Um, uh, th- just the facility is top notch like we we're talking about the new pool will be open for that the new lazy river will be open for that they have cabins uh they have hookups camper hookups they have just uh regular tent tent camping space for regular tent camping so please don't don't miss this y'all i'm, I'm telling you if if you if you can't go for the full eight days, I, I believe it's $150 for the entire eight days is a ticket. So, uh, Andrew, this is Visions. Uh, Visions will be in July. It's eight days. And it is incorporating a lot of different off-road racing. So that's that's what I'm talking about. The National Rock Racing Association is going to be there, and we we are going to be putting on the hill climb events. Pro Rock is going to be there. They are going to be doing the knockout hill climb event. Uh, Ultra Four will be there with the 4400 cars. So there'll be uh, several different series coming together to make up visions and it's going to be epic then the national rock racing association andrew check this out the national rock racing association will be back at mid-america for finals in october so uh so yes we will be back there for finals as well i'm gonna be there for six i'll be there six times Last last weekend, Pro Rock, Visions, 
point one finals. No, it's five. But yeah. <laughs> Vision should be counted as two 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 trips. That's gonna be a lot eight days, man. But but if you could do it at any park if you could do it at any destination, it's going to be Mid America. So you know, they keep the store stocked. You can go in there to the general store and get whatever you need. Whether you need a towel or soap or whatever. They got all that junk, man. <laughs> Top notch facility, y'all. Andrew says, I got you. We'll have a talk. We'll have to talk more about it. Sounds amazing. Visions. Yeah, visions will be amazing. Finals will be amazing. Uh, anytime you can get to Mid America, it's going to be amazing. Definitely. Well, listen, y'all, uh, quick quick heads up here. So I have been extremely busy. You guys know that. I've been on the road every single weekend this month. So this weekend, uh, these, these next few days, uh, I will hopefully be digging out from the month of April. My goal is to get a lot of the coverage from uh, as far back as Bikini Bottoms out. I know that social media and, and our our release of of uh footage and stuff has kind of been slacking but it's just because i'm only home for two or three days and then i'm back uh out flying out again so uh this will be my first time being at home for at least a week and i'm going to be able to process and do a lot more that way so uh, um, we're going to go live tomorrow. I hope to have, uh, some interviews with Danny Smith. Uh, I've been in, I've been in contact with Timmy Cameron. Um, and let me know, hit me up in the comments, message me. If you'd like to hear from anybody in particular, uh, we'll definitely get them on the show. Um, uh, heard from Dan Carter. So we got some folks to, we got some folks to, uh, some interviews to release we've also got some footage some action shots some cinema cinema rock bouncing type videos that i'd like to release so uh be watching for that i apologize again i know all y'all just just want to uh, to see the action if you can't make it and uh, i respect that for sure but i also ask that you you have some patience with me because uh, I just literally am. I just don't have time. I just literally don't. I have more footage than I can process and have time to put together before I'm leaving again. Yeah, that's the reality of it. <laughs> so I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out and I look forward to uh, hearing from everybody and seeing everybody. Uh, uh, around out at the races and on social media and stuff. If you need anything, please help uh, hit me up. Let me know. I'll talk to everybody soon.